live from Copenhagen, Denmark, it's theCUBE, covering Nutanix.next 2019. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Nutanix.next. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, co-hosting along with Stu Miniman. We are joined by Christo Duran. He is the COO, IT Hardware and Infrastructure at Tresco Holdings. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Hi, thanks, and thanks for having me, yeah. Direct from Namibia, so we keep hearing that there are customers from 50 countries. Yeah. And, and you, you, you represent Namibia here. Yeah, I come from far down in Africa. <laughs> so tell our viewers a little bit about Tresco, what, what you do down there. So Trusco is a, a financial services company, firstly. Uh, we look after all our Namibian customers in the insurance industry, as well as uh, in the banking industry as well. We've been busy with, uh, with building our banking industry now for the last five years, and we're almost to that point where we can start serving people. Uh, then we've got also educational services that we give to our, our customers. And we've got a roughly about 15,000 students all doing distance learning. And of that 15,000, we've got about 80 to 90% of them that we also do finance. Uh, not just for the course material, but also the technology that we finance for them so that to give them the capabilities to do um, their studies through us. Uh, then we've got also natural resources. It's quite a new, new business unit for us uh, where we dabble a little bit in diamond mining. And uh, we've got two, two mines currently, one in Namibia itself, where we produce probably one of the best diamonds in the world, uh, clear cut diamonds. And then also in Sierra Leone, we've recently acquired a mining license there as well. Uh, then in, in Namibia, uh, the other stuff that we do is, is in shared services, where we have our own radio station that we broadcast in Namibia. And then we do a little bit of uh, in-house marketing and media and those type of things. Well, just, well, just a yeah, few well, things. Well, luckily, Christo, your IT staff, they have it easy. <laughs> yeah. They don't have, you know, uh, you know I, I, I walk through the expo floor, it's like, oh, well, how many verticals do you need to go to all of them uh, <laughs> to be able to learn what you're doing? So yeah. give us, if you can, just a, a little bit of a snapshot of your IT uh, environment, you know, what your team's responsible for, yeah. and if you can, kind of bring us even back before, uh, you know, you began yeah. the journey onto New Yeah, so, so, so we, we're very centralized in, in Namibia. Uh, all our stuff gets run out of one data center or one common area in our air offices, and then we expand to the six branches out in Namibia and in South Africa, and then now of late will be in Sierra Leone. Um, our IT team pretty much look after everything. Uh, we've got a saying at the office, if it's got a plug on, it's IT's problem. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we, we do everything from the infrastructure, the networking, the servers, the storage. Uh, well, now with Nutanix, everything is already built into, into one solution. Mm -hmm. So that disparate systems have now fallen away, and we only look after Yeah, can, can, can bring after us back those. to that, that move to Nutanix. Yeah. Was there an upgrade that you were looking to do? Was there a pain point? What was, what was the impetus to uh, you know, look at Nutanix? Yeah. So, so our businesses has expanded um, quite quickly, and the old way of doing things with the separate SANs, the separate switches, separate servers, those type of things, became a little bit of a slumbersome and, and, and difficult to manage because you had to have all these different kind of vendors that's got specific um, software solutions and specific training that you have to do and it just became a little bit too much for us and we decided hey, let's step back a little bit and, and see if there's any solutions out there that, that makes it firstly easier, uh, that we can manage with less people and do more and uh, at that stage, uh, hyperconvergence was just on the peak of, of, of becoming a thing, if you want to call it that. And uh, we really done our research and found that Nutanix at that stage was the best fit for us and also the most mature in the hyperconverged space. So that's, that's basically where we got to, to the Nutanix solution. Um, obviously, like everyone else, we started with the community edition, uh, dabbled our hand a little bit in there, and so now it's actually, it's doable, it's easy, um, and something that we can build on. So you've now been with them for about two years now, so still a relatively new relationship, but talk about the beginning in particular, and 
relationships are hard. <laughs> Every relationship is hard. Definitely. There are inevitable stumbling blocks. What were some of the challenges you faced and how did you work with Nutanix to, yeah, to so overcome them? Yeah, so challenges, I can say, luckily we haven't had a lot of them. Uh, our business are not nearly as big as the Europeans and, and the Americans, so it is not that a complex a system. Uh, we had our, our challenges in the, in the beginning, um, hypervisor specifically, because we made a, a, a huge move. We went totally 180 degrees from a Hyper-V environment. We said, we're going to go right over to AHV. Don't want to do, do deal, deal licensing, deal everything. Let's just jump in on AHV and go Nutanix fully. So obviously we had a few challenges with a couple of our services and servers. Um, but other than that, I must say it was actually a pretty easy move for us. Yeah, so uh, it, it's interesting that you say going from Hyper-V because uh, you know, I've talked to the customers, oh, there's a savings for moving from VMware. Oh, Microsoft, Hyper-V is all included. And, and when, exactly. when you're doing Windows, and if you've got Hyper-V, I'm sure you've got a yeah, Windows it, it, application. So was there an application change, or what was the driver? There, there was to move? some, yeah. yeah. There, was, there was some of our applications that was very specific, especially on the network driver side of things, uh, moving from, from the normal Windows drivers to the IO drivers in Linux. Um, we had a couple of challenges with our in-house apps as well. Um, but again, it, it was a reasonably painless move over across to, to, to uh, Nutanix, yeah. One of the things we, we keep hearing, at, uh, hearing about at this conference is how Nutanix is evolving as customer needs and demands are changing. You, you gave us the overview of your company. You are getting into new businesses and st still continuing and established yeah. businesses. How, what are some of the, the, the needs that your IT is experiencing and how is Nutanix meeting those yeah. needs? Okay, so in, in the old infrastructure days, Provisioning <laughs> was probably the biggest hurdle. Uh, if the dev guys wanted stuff, you first had to go and buy some more hardware <laughs> because you need to adapt to them. Um, when we moved over to Hyper-V eventually, uh, it became easier, but it was still not, not the right fit. You still had to tweak it and play with it, et cetera, et cetera. So what, what the, the biggest challenge was for us is to get our dev up guys um, a quicker access to what they need, and then also our customers as well. Um, we've we've moved from from where there's a person that needed to provision storage, needed to provision networking, needed to provision server and VMs. Um, that's that's now all basically done by one person, uh, and most of those things we've already automized. So <laughs> uh, it it is five ten minutes and then they've got what they need, and, and uh, I, th I think it made us a little bit more agile, because we, we, we pride ourselves in being uh, uh, quick thinkers, um, deploying stuff in, uh, fast, um, and that was always Trasco's main advantage in the Namibian market. Uh, we didn't go through all the, all the other rigmarole that, that the other companies have of tendering and doing things in a certain way. And by the time that you get there, it's like, it's not relevant anymore. Now we need to do something else again. Uh, and that, that brought us quick to market and, yeah. and made it so that we can uh, deliver quicker uh, solutions to, to our customers. So, Krista, was there any impact organizationally for, for rolling out Nutanix? Uh, you know, I, you, you mentioned DevOps there. You know, the goal, of course, is that they shouldn't have to worry about the infrastructure, Sucks and it. hopefully N Nutanix yeah. is delivering that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, let me, there's, there's some retraining or some moving inside the organization. What was, what's the impact been on your organization? On, on, the, on, the, on the customer side, none. Yeah. They, they didn't even know we moved over right. until we told but, them. But from okay, the IT side, uh, yeah. From, from our customer side, yeah. they, they've not seen anything. From the IT side of things, uh, we, we had a phased approach. So it was, we started off with the community edition where we basically just dabbled in it, see, saw what we can do on it, and then also, let's call it training for the IT guys so that they're comfortable and now the, com uh, now the product works. So by the time that we got to, to, to deploying it in, in, in production, it, it was actually a, a very smooth transaction. Um, we, we had all the kinks sorted out beforehand and made sure that everything will work. Um, again, being in the finance industry and um, 
uh, in the banking industry, downtime is an absolute no-no. Um, and, and we wanted to, to get to a point where we say, we're not going to move over uh, production sites, production environments uh, in the evening from 12 to 4 in the morning because we've all got families. So we rather plan it properly ahead of time. And, and yes, we did it in, actually, dare I say, in production time, we, we moved across almost seamlessly. Into, we, we've got a lot of redundancies built in, obviously. So um, it gave us the opportunity to actually move in place, if you want to call it that. So what does the future hold for this relationship? Where do you see you, your, your partnership with Nutanix uh, evolving? And where do you think you'll be, say, five years from now? Yeah, so, so we've got, a, uh, we've got a, a roadmap set out with Nutanix and where we now only in the baby phase where we've done the infrastructure, we're happy, everything is working. So now we're in the POC stage of uh, exploring the, the, the software suite in its entirety. We've started now with uh, Leap um, and built a DR scenario um, and tested it extensively. And we now in that process, probably when I get back in Namibia, we'll have the licenses hopefully to start deploying it in our, in our production environment. And then more closer to the future in the next, I would say, six to nine months, uh, we're going to take on frame. Because part of, part of our whole business scenario, because we were Microsoft, was remote desktop services, and that was what kept us so lean. Um, yeah, there's some challenges now uh, with remote desktop services where our dev guys are moving into some Linux and some uh, Kubernetes and there's different things coming up now where we move away from the traditional monolithic applications to more more agile applications and uh, yeah then we'll we'll start dabbling our hands in in frame uh, for us uh, the old back was when frame came out that it was only in the cloud and for us in Namibia Africa uh, the internet is not as stable as we would like so that that was totally off the, off the cards for us. Um, now that it moved back into on-prem and we can run frame on-prem, um, that will probably be our biggest project going forward for the next, I would say, year, year and a half. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, Chris. It was a thank pleasure you. talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of .next.